How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to be doing another printer tinker. So I bought a printer from Canada off of eBay. It is a Zebra GC420D. I've never messed with these printers before. I believe it's very similar to the LP2844 but just an updated version. It takes in more languages. It's the same 203 DPI. And it was listed for parts not working. $37.79 after the conversion. It was 50 bucks Canadian. I paid $15.11 for shipping. We're going to unbox this. Hopefully we can get it running. And I didn't just waste a bunch of money. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Let's get into the printer. All right, here we are with a Canadian Post package. This printer came from our beautiful northern neighbors. It's going to talk a little bit funny and it's used to cold climates. From Quebec, the Beely Box Company. And that's what a import Canadian label looks like. Kind of looks like ours. Very nice little printer. And there you can see down there the customs one piece Zebra GC 420D printer. I didn't have to pay any import taxes or anything on this. I bought it February 8th and today is the 21st. So it took about 13 days to ship. Here is the listing. There's only one picture. There should have been more than that. Yeah, for parts not working, no test, not tested, no return, no warranty. Just how I like it. And he just chucked it in here with some air pillows. Four of them still inflated, two of them deflated, and one of them almost deflated all the way. Not a very good packing job. All right, let's take a look at the outside of the printer. It's got some plastic covering. Maybe that was from when it was new, but it pretty much looks just like the LP2844. We got our on-off switch, our female power barrel adapter, USB type A printer scanner port, we have a parallel port and we have a serial port. Underneath, we got our model number, GC420D. Input power, 20 volts at 2.5 amps. Manufactured in 2013, made in China. So this one's from 2013. I think they started making this model in 2008 though. So we got a newer model. Looks just like the inside of an LP2844. Print head looks the same as an LP2844. The body looks pretty much the same as an LP2844. It's just that this is supposed to be able to read more languages, which is a good thing. I do not have a correct power supply for this. I mailed off my last Zebra power supply with the last printer that I had sold, but I do have a Dymo power supply. 24 volts at 1.75 amps, and we're going to plug that in. Okay, we get a blinking red light. Got a nice fan fold of labels. And install this probably would be better like this, but then the labels are like all junked up. So the way that you calibrate this one is you hold the front button until you get seven flashes. I'm gonna start holding it. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then release. And now it should be calibrating. There we go. Print head looks good. Everything's printing very, very solid. Oops, and I ran out. I think I was not, I didn't have enough paper in there to run the calibration. So I'm gonna get some more labels and then I'm going to run the calibration again. All right, I just got a fat stack. Should allow us to calibrate. I think it is already calibrated because it pressed the feed label, feeds one label. We're gonna do a full calibration for example purposes in case you need to calibrate your GC420D. Um, we're gonna hold this down again. One, one, two, one, two, three, it's one, two, four, three, five, 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 six, one, two, three, five, six, seven, and then we're gonna release. Okay, I was almost done with the calibration before, right before we ran out of paper, but the calibration takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine labels to calibrate, so do be aware of that. But by the looks of this printer, all I needed was a power supply. I think it's going to be working perfectly fine. I'm now going to grab my trusty Windows PC, and that blinking light, I have to hit feed on it once after 
I don't know, opening the top or whatever. I think it's set up to calibrate after opening the top or powering on. So I do have to hit that feed button once to get it into ready mode. So I, I just plugged it in and it already recognized and installed, it looks like it already recognized and installed it from Zebra Printer Utilities. I'm gonna try to print a sample label. And I had the dimensions totally off. I gotta change the dimensions on that. <laughs> okay, after setting those four by six preferences, it now pops up in a four by six size. We're gonna hit print and I have a feeling. All right, so my camera battery died and while I was charging it, I found out how you're actually supposed to calibrate this thing. Instead of waiting for the seven flash sequence, you're just supposed to wait for the two flash sequence. So we're going to, we gotta turn it on. We're gonna hold down one flash, one, two flash, and then it'll auto calibrate without wasting like seven or eight, nine labels. And it doesn't print anything on these, so you can reuse these labels. So that is a proper auto calibration. The other way is also calibration, but it's I think called manual calibration and it just takes a lot more labels, a lot more time. One flash, I think it prints your current configuration. There we go. It looks like it's printing an EPL language and that EPL language must just be... The annoying thing that's going on right now is anytime you open the top, you have to press it to calibrate one label before you can use it. That is something that we're going to mess with in settings later on in the video. So if your printer does that, well, it will print one or two labels after opening or turning it on. It has to do with... Um, this setting right here, let me show you. Right here. Um, it's at, right where it says head close, it says feed. So we gotta change that to do nothing. All right, so back to our PC. Let's get one good sample label printed. We opened the head, so we gotta send one first. There we go. Ooh, and it looks like our print head is not printing well. Look at that. When we actually print a label, our print head is no bueno. So we're gonna try to increase the darkness and see if that does anything. Try printing another one. Darkness on 12. And what happened? All I did was turn the darkness up. I'm gonna try to print an old Poshmark label. That looks absolutely terrible. I don't know if it's something in the language or what. That is really, really, really strange. I'm gonna try cleaning the print head with some alcohol to see if that gets any improvement. It doesn't look like anything's on it. There's no stickiness or anything. According to the printout that we did with like the settings on it, it's only printed 15,000 inches, which is not that much for this printer. So it's very, very strange that I'm getting this, um, excuse the, the big bar in the middle that I'm, I just printed over it, but I'm, it's, I'm getting these light barcodes. The top of the label, the address printing out fine, but the barcode for whatever reason is being really, really faded on everything that I print. I won't be able to show you step-by-step step how I did the print head swap in this video. That'll be another video, but it will hopefully show that, um, but I will be able to show you the outcome of the repair if it works. And that's the only thing I could think of it being because that's the only part of the printer that really has a wear and tear on it is the print head. And it looks like based off of the light printing that it would be the print head. Good on Zebra, they build these with replaceable print heads. Uh, they're about 30 something bucks off of Amazon and I will be doing a print head repair video highlighting that exact repair in the future. Probably an installation on this one. And I don't, I don't understand why it was the print head either because 
This only had 15,000 inches printed through it, so it's kind of weird that the print head would be bad already. So let's try to print. All right, let's try to print one with the new print head. And that is the same thing. Okay, so this is actually the next day because I got so frustrated with this printer that I gave up for the day. But I figured it out. Yesterday we, we went as far as changing the print head because we are really we stupid. I didn't have a Zebra power supply so I used this Dymo power supply that I had. A barrel plug fit. This was 24 volts at 1.75 amps. The printer takes 20 volts at 2.5 amps. So I wasn't giving it enough amps is my guess. I didn't have a Zebra power supply to test it. I'm grabbing my other Dymo printer uh, power supply, plugging it in, which is actually more volts and more amps than we should be giving the printer. I initially thought it was software related, print head related, everything except for power supply related. But as soon as I changed the power supply out, so many wasted labels yesterday messing with it. I make these videos look fairly easy, but I'm actually going through a lot of labels, a lot of trial and error, figuring it out. New power supply, print looks absolutely beautiful. No longer stopping at the barcode. I'm guessing it wasn't giving it enough power to print the actual barcode. Maybe the barcode computing takes more of a power draw, I'm not really sure. It's blinking red right now because it's out of labels, not because it's broken. But this printer was a complete success. I thought it was initially a failure. It was so frustrating. Based off of the way that the labels were printing, I thought it was a complete failure. But I was just ignorant on the power supply. So the GC420D is good. The only annoying thing it's doing right now is if you open and close the top, makes you feed one label as, I guess, a calibration mechanism. And it's because the settings, the default settings, right there, it says head close feed. We need to change that to head close no motion. And in order to do that, you have to get into the sending printer commands function on Zebra driver utilities. I probably will make a separate tutorial for that. For a total of 52.93, I'm very happy that I got this thing working. This specific model I think has more languaging options and I've already done some more tests. I got it working on Android with a USB-C converter. That is gonna be saved for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the Zebra GC420D, let me know about it in the comments section below and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.